to Hope Matters, a YouTube program of Mount Olive Lutheran Church here in Santa Monica, California. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor of Mount Olive, and each week I talk to interesting people from around the USA and even around the world on the topic of hope, because we believe that hope matters. Today, my special guest is a longtime friend of mine, Dr. Leonard Schultz. Uh, Leonard is a accomplished academician with all kinds of a long resume. Leonard, I hadn't seen your whole resume in a while. It, it's very impressive. And <laughs> Leonard has been a, a dean, a professor, and, and done many, many things in academia. And we met when Leonard was head of all of education from the babies through colleges in our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And that included the nearly 30 colleges and the, how many campus ministries? Hundreds of campus ministries at that Hundreds time. of campus ministries. And, 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 you know, thousands of preschools like Mount Olives and a number of parochial schools. And it was a major responsibility at that time. And we were together in the, in the office in Chicago and had, and became good friends as well as our spouses. And so Leonard, it's good to have you here on Hope Matters. And Leonard has been our council president here at Mount Olives. So, um, I don't know if you call it retirement, Leonard. I think you've been busy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, Eric. Right, it's a pleasure. Well, uh, what, else, what else should our viewers know about Leonard Schultz? Oh, my goodness. I was born on a small family farm in South Central Texas, and I have been blessed in my career to have had openings for my for my academic interests. I got scholarships to go to college. I got scholarships to go to graduate school. So I know that my, my ability to offer these things to the universities I've worked in and to the church I serve has been a blessing from the get-go. So for me, uh, I think about hope and I think about uh, uh, the fact, the very fact that I have lived my life according to a, my understanding of the Lutheran concept of vocation. I train myself to listen uh, as much as I can, as sensitively as I can to what I am feeling I can bring, to what the world is telling me it needs, and to what the people I'm around are, are telling me about what works and what doesn't work. So as a result, I have managed to stay flexible. That's why my resume shows uh, yeah, so yeah, many things. Yeah. Uh, and then that's a blessing. Uh, that vocation is a gift. Uh, I, just, I just hope that uh, we in the church continue to exercise our listening muscles to discern our vocation and then carry it out. Leonard, what was the key for you for that Lutheran link to vocation? Was it growing up in the Lutheran church? Was it confirmation or further study? What, what was it? I was confirmed uh, at the normal age uh, in the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church on a small rural congregation. Uh, but just as I was being confirmed, our retired old pastor passed away and the church closed our congregation. Oh. Uh, so my family and I went down the road to uh, an American Lutheran Church congregation, which is where I spent my high school years. Uh, I was active as in the youth group. I actually was invited to uh, give a couple of sermons to that congregation when I was a teenager. I took care of preparing the bulletins. So I knew about congregational life. But I have to say, when I went away to university, I... I did seek out Lutheran campus ministry at the University of Texas at Austin. And my experience was disappointing because I was looking for something more engaging for my intellect and my spirit. And frankly, uh, spaghetti suppers were fine, <laughs> but they just weren't, they just weren't the kind of stimulus that I, that I needed to continue my faith life. Uh, it was, Again, in, in graduate school, when I actually encountered in a more systematic way the works of Martin Luther, that I started to connect my faith life and my intellectual life more actively. And that is the connection that has sustained me for all these decades since. 
Uh, I, my first full-time teaching position was at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, where I served as an uh, instructor and assistant professor of German. And I experienced in that a very intentional academic community. And I have to tell you, I was, I was grateful that I was there as an officer and not as a cadet. <laughs> but I loved my cadets. They were, they were wonderful people. Uh, unfortunately, some of them were there because Uncle Jim or Grandpa Fritz was a military academy graduate and they felt they had to follow in those footsteps, but it wasn't the calling for some of them. So as a result, about a third of the entry level students their freshman year were not there at graduation. And so I did a lot of counseling in that, in that environment. And, and it, my, my understanding of vocation helped, helped me uh, meet them in their need. Um, and so, so yeah, that, that was, uh, so uh, if I reflect though about what I would say about hope, I think that our culture often confuses hope with optimism, with a certain level of cheerfulness, uh, and maybe even with desire. I hope that things go well for you. Of course I desire that, but hope is something much deeper that enables you to navigate the ups and the downs of emotions and experiences and disappointments and joys. I guess I would say hope relates to optimism or desire in the same way that joy relates to happiness. Happiness, uh, I always found it a little shallow that uh, we as a nation declare ourselves to be in the pursuit of happiness. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I think we are heirs in the Lutheran theological tradition to a much more grounding, rich notion of joy uh, in creation, in one another, in our witness to the world. And that's what keeps me going. Great. So these days, 2020, right? Um, people who feel about things like you and me, um, it's, there are days it's hard to be hopeful, isn't it? There are certainly days when the, what's wrong with the world is on the front burner. <laughs> you cannot ignore all the challenges. You must not ignore all the challenges we are facing. And that is where I think uh, uh, hope comes in because it empowers you to look them in the face, not to paper them over, not to say, oh, get over it, things will get better, but to be called to engage, faith active in, active in love in the world, to address the problems we see and the, the hurts and, and sufferings we see. And there are plenty of them to see, aren't there, Eric? Uh, so I think that, you know, Lutheranism has had a bad rap in some parts of our history because of a certain privatism, a certain, I'm okay with God and, you know, don't bother me with politics. But we are called to witness into the world. And that's to get back to the, uh, to my, my understanding of the Lutheran notion of vocation is we aren't called out of the world into a monastery. We are called into the world. Luther's writings are full of wonderful quotations about where you will find your Bible and your brewery and your spanking your children and all of those wonderful little phrases. But the point is that we are called into service to our neighbors in the world. And, and with excellence, with yeah, as yeah. much excellence as we can muster. Cool. Well, you've watched some of these interviews and you know that I often ask people gets you up in the morning you know these are these are tough days for our nation uh, you know and and you know what what gets you up in the morning in the morning Leonard? 
Well, Eric, you know that most recently I've had a pretty uh, serious health issue confront me. Last summer I was diagnosed with advanced stage metastatic thyroid cancer. And I've been through some, some challenging times over the past year, several surgeries, radiation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, et cetera. And there were plenty of times when you could kind of get down in the down. But I have been blessed with a marvelous response to the latest immunotherapy. And it, as a result, I feel like, okay, I've been given more time. Uh, I'm, I'm 73 years old. I've lived the four score, you know, the three score and 10 that are allotted normally. So you're prepared. But the gift of this time with the people I love and the places I love, and you know, Mount Olive is one of them, uh, for sure. When I retired in 2014 and came out to Los Angeles to join my wife, Wendy, and her work as provost at Mount St. Mary's University here, uh, I started a, a whole new enterprise with serving my congregation. I've served this congregation, I've been able to serve this congregation with more presence than any congregation I've been in before, and it's been very rewarding for me. You've been a man, for sure, and uh, um, yeah. Well, and you know, I, I, you know, I've been with you this past year, and you know that that short time when you weren't sure if you were going to be able to talk well. I mean, right. here you are, sounding like you've always sounded. You know, that's I mean, wonderful. To, that's wonderful to hear, Eric. No, the first surgery, the second surgery, removed the the tumor along with my thyroid gland and unfortunately the nerve to one of my vocal cords was so involved in that that it went it got taken and so uh through some therapy some voice therapy i have actually learned to speak with one vocal cord and uh, that too is gives me hope i have a voice i have a voice again yeah yeah and I, I mean this body that God created and that's had to kind of regenerates itself is pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. And of course, the amazing gifts and skills of the UCLA doctors and surgeons and therapists uh, has been such a blessing, such a blessing. I, I was impressed walking you through that process and, your, and the conversation because we didn't know any of these people before this happened, these doctors. They were, well, the, they were the ones that appeared at your bedside, right? That's right. No, uh, uh, they put together a team and they communicated so well with each other to coordinate my care that I, 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 I think that uh, modern medicine doesn't always uh, profit from that kind of communication. So that too is something that gives me hope. Uh, when my father was dying of heart problems, 20 years ago, uh, they had uh, the, the medical records were the thick file of paper records that the doctors had to slip through to see what other doctors had written. Now, finally, medicine is taking advantage of the new technology that's available for them to see at a glance what's in the record in the computer. And it has made all the difference in my treatment. You're obviously the uh, the benefit of yeah. you know of, of the scientific uh, advances and medical advances, and uh, we thank God for that for sure. Amen. Amen. Any final thoughts, Leonard? We certainly covered a lot of territory here about hope or anything else you'd like to talk about. Well, uh, I, I you know in reflecting about coming and talking to you about hope. I was, I was drawn to the story of the road, the road to Emmaus and uh, the fact that the, uh, the disciples and the people who were walking didn't recognize Jesus. They were explaining to this stranger who was walking with them the, the events of the last several days and the crucifixion and what happened on Easter Sunday morning and whatever. And as they were explaining that, they, they said, okay, they, we had our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped 
that he was going to redeem Israel. I think that's a salutary thing to, to take in. The disciples who were closest to Jesus were struggling with sustaining their hope at that moment in time. And it took another revelation for them to be, to have the scales from their eyes lifted. So when we experience down times in our hope, I think about that. And I think about how, you know, it's okay to be down because we have a deeper spring of our hope that will, will express itself if we are but patient and uh, the assurance of things hoped for, it will be there. It will be there. Well, that's, that's certainly a good comment to end on. Thank you for being with us, Leonard, and, and we really appreciate it. This is Hope Matters, a production of Mount Olive Lutheran Church. Uh, I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor, and we're so glad you've joined us once again for our conversation about hope this week with Dr. Leonard Schultz, a Lutheran educator with ex wide experience across the USA and even around the world in, in the areas of education and faith and a faith leader here in Santa Monica also. So, Leonard, thank you for being with us, and thank you all for watching us today and, and uh, enjoying Hope Matters. We present these programs because we believe in a God of hope, and we believe in Hope Matters. Thank Amen. you.